Hello and welcome to another lesson. Following on from the last lesson, this lesson's going to cover some of Sibelius' proofreading potential. Now, the most powerful proofreading feature in Sibelius is Review Mode. And Review Mode can be turned on and off, either in the Review tab or down the bottom right-hand side of the screen. Now, Review Mode is gloriously simple and useful. All it does is disable the ability to edit the document in any way. The only thing you can add or edit in review mode are comments, highlights, and annotations. This means that I can move around the score thoroughly without having to worry about messing something up or shifting something out of place, because in review mode, even if I select a note and try to change it either with the mouse or the keys, Sibelius won't let me. But one of the main reasons why review mode is useful is not necessarily because of Sibelius users, but rather non-Sibelius users. It's not uncommon that while working on a project you want to or have to show your work to somebody else, and particularly if that person doesn't know how to use the program, the last thing that you want is that they scroll through for themselves. But with review mode on, scrolling through a score actually becomes quite safe. Now, Sibelius also has a couple of other useful little proofreading tools that can be found as plugins. One, for example, is Compare Starves. With this plugin, you select the two starves that you want to compare. You then run the plugin. And then you can select exactly what it is that you want to compare. And any differences between the two starves will be marked in red, even differences in position with text, for example. Now, this can be useful for long passages where multiple instruments are playing in unison just to check that there are no slip-ups. And there are a lot of other really great little plugins here. For example, check clefs. This will just check to see if there are any redundant clefs in the score. For example, if there's a treble clef on the staff, even though the staff already has a treble clef. So running this plugin will find those clefs and alert me to them. There's also a plugin called Check Pizzicato to show you where any redundant pits or arco markings are. So if I've doubled up on a pits marking, the plugin will show me where that is. Now there's a really great plugin by Roman Molino Dunn called Check Redundancies, and it does just that. It checks if there are any redundant time signatures, clefs, key signatures, instrument changes, or rehearsal marks. And in this plugin, I can choose which of those I would like to check and whether the plugin should just locate the redundancy or process it by either selecting it, hiding it, or deleting it. So, if I go back to my score and add a couple of redundant things, for example, some redundant clefs, and redundant time signatures, and maybe even key signatures, when I run the plugin, and tell it to delete the redundancies. The plugin just removes all of them for me. So it's a pretty nifty little thing. This can be very powerful if used correctly. So those are just some pretty handy little proofreading tools. I hope they're helpful to you, and I'll see you in the next lesson.